This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, we end today's show by looking at the extraordinary life of world-renowned Pakistani human rights lawyer and activist Asma Jahangir, who died on Sunday in Lahore at the age of 66. For decades, Jahangir has been a leading advocate for women, minorities and democracy in Pakistan. In 1983, she was imprisoned for her work with the movement to restore democracy during the military rule of General Zia uh, ul Haq. Uh, later, in 2006, Seven, she was put under house arrest for helping lead a lawyers' protest movement that helped oust uh, military leader Pervez Musharraf. Uh, Asma Jahangir was also the founding chairwoman of the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan. She served repeatedly as a UN rapporteur on human rights extrajudicial killings and religious freedom. At the time of her death, she was the U.N. Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in Iran. On Sunday, the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, said in a statement, we have lost a human rights giant. As one of Pakistan's most powerful lawyers, Asma Jahangir founded Pakistan's first legal aid center in 1986, went on to serve as the first female president of the Supreme Court Bar Association of Pakistan. This is Asma Jahangir speaking in a video produced by the Right Livelihood Awards, which she won in 2014. When you start off, there's something inside you telling you to do it. And it comes because you have a heart and an eye, and the courage to stand up against those forces, and there are plenty of them, believe me, that do not wish to see people free. Human rights, it's not a job, it's a conviction. I've used the law as an instrument, and I've used the courts, but I've been on the streets as well. I've been in protest marches, I've been to prison, I've been in the house arrest. So for each issue and for each incident, there has to be a thought out strategy. Justice is a rare commodity in our part of the world, very rare. But sometimes even shouting for justice gives you some satisfaction that you're being heard and you must be heard. You knock and 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 one day they are going to hear. That was Asma Jahangir. She died on Sunday in Lahore, Pakistan, after suffering a heart attack. We're joined now by one of her dear friends, Aisha Jalal, the Mary Richardson Professor of History at Tufts University and the Fletcher School. She was not only a close personal friend of Asma Jahangir, she is also the author of a number of books, including The Struggle for Pakistan, a Muslim Homeland and Global Politics. Professor Jalal, our condolences to you on the death of Asma. Um, first and foremost, Thank you very much. talk about Asma's significance in the world and what she represented and did. I mean, she's an icon of human rights internationally, uh, but within Pakistan, she was uh, really the symbol of the restoration of democracy. It was her petition um, to release her father that led to. Um, uh, basically, uh, the, the, the principle uh, being enunciated by the judiciary that martial law was not above the constitution. Her father uh, was so a progressive politician in, in Pakistan. That's right. That's right. And he was in jail uh, and under martial law, and she filed a petition and she won. Uh, and that led to uh, the process for the restoration of democracy in Pakistan. So I really see her as that. History will remember for her for that in the context of Pakistan internationally, of course, uh, she is an icon of international uh, human rights. She's also recognized as a pioneer of women's rights in Pakistan. Could you talk about her uh, advocacy on the behalf of, of women within uh, Pakistan? I mean, she has been transformative in women's issues, bringing women's issues into the public. Uh, it's because of her that many women uh, 
acquired the courage to go and seek justice. Uh, she set up um, a, a special home for uh, women who suffered abuse um, called Dastak. Uh, so she did a great deal for, human, uh, for women's rights uh, in Pakistan, and I think she has really helped change the discourse on women's rights in Pakistan. Can you talk about her jailing under Zia al -Haq, um, her house detention when she led lawyers protesting the dictatorship? I mean, Asma was incorrigible, and she was not to be deterred by any military dictator. I think that she—there was a certain sort of personality um, uh, that, 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 that she sort of—you know, that, that she became under military rule, and uh, under, under democracy, she had a different sort of attitude. Uh, she wanted to improve democracy, but with the uh, generals, she was ferocious. Uh, so I can tell you this, that she was never, never cowed down by either Ziaul Haq or um, uh, Musharraf, and that's what made Asma so great. <laughs> and also her role in uh, in the international human rights movement, her uh, many posts uh, as a rapporteur for the United Nations. Could you talk about that as well? I mean, she has been inspirational for the human rights movement uh, internationally. I think her personality, her courage outspokenness. Uh, she never really uh, compromised on principles. And I think for all those reasons, uh, the international community of human rights uh, uh, defenders will uh, remember her, uh, and, and we will continue to remember Asma. She will always live uh, in our hearts and our minds. We wanted to go to a few clips of Asma herself. This from 2012, when Asma Jahangir spoke at the Oslo Freedom Forum about the U.S.-backed dictatorship of General Zia ul Haq of Pakistan. When I became a lawyer, that was the time that the most lethal dictator, Zaul Haq, had taken over our country. He was patronized by the West because he was the leader of the so-called jihad industry, which now you are suffering also in the West. But we suffered it even before September 11th. For us, every single day was September 11th, ever since Zaul Haq took office in Pakistan. For us, we had never seen public flogging before, and we saw it then. For us, we had never experienced laws which said that people should be stoned to death and their hands should be amputated, but we did see it with Ziaul Haq. And we had all the Western leadership backing this great jihadist to the cost of the people and the women of Pakistan. And this is Asma Jahangir uh, when she received the Right Livelihood Award in 2014. Often I have been asked if I had any plans of leaving Pakistan because of numerous threats. Without any hesitation, I have replied negatively, because in comparison to the terror of some, the warmth I have received from others is overwhelming. Pakistan has numerous problems and several faults, but it is also unique in its preservation and perseverance to overcome intolerance, boldly face authoritarianism, and in denouncing terror, terrorist acts carried out in the name of religion. Pakistanis have deeply suffered, and they deserve better. I know this is so hard for you to hear her voice. This is such a shock. She had so many plans for the future, Professor Jalal. But your thoughts of the legacy yes. she leaves? I mean, the legacy is going to be with us. Uh, it'll be very hard for people to step into her shoes, but I think that there are many uh, able uh, individuals, men and women, uh, thanks to her, because she has really given her best to the, the youth. Uh, in the hope that they will uh, continue something that she started, transformed, uh, and that is the conception of basic rights, uh, human rights uh, as we know in the West, but basic democratic rights for all, for women, for minorities, and Asma will be with us forever. Let's end with Asma Jahangir speaking in 2012 at the University of San Diego. And I recall many years ago, when I first time I went to prison and I came out, my daughter, who was very young at that time, was very upset that I had gone to jail. 
and said to me, why do you do this? Why do you continuously keep going to police stations and jails? I can assure you that if you didn't do it, women's rights would come. They will come without you. With you there, they may come only an hour earlier. <laughs> so why do you have to leave us? But I think we are all fighting for that hour earlier. Mm -hmm. That hour earlier. Um, Aisha Jalal, in these last 20 seconds, what you'll tell your students today at Tufts. I think she's a model uh, to be uh, understood and followed and emulated by those who really want to pursue uh, a career in human rights. But even for those uh, who are committed to uh, enhancing democratic uh, dynamics in their countries, I think Asma is somebody that we can all take a leaf from. Aisha Jalal, Mary Richardson, professor of history at Tufts University and the Fletcher School, close personal friend of Asma Jahangir, who died of a heart attack this weekend in Lahore, Pakistan, where she lived. That does it for our broadcast. Democracy Now! produced by Mike Burke, Renee Feldstein, Augusta Nermin Sheikh, Carla Wells, Laura Gaddesdiner, I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez.